All right guys, so this video is probably gonna be a little longer than I anticipated, so I'm actually gonna break it up into two different videos. Today's video is part one, and coming up in a couple of days, I'll have part two, and you definitely wanna stay tuned for part two because it is insane. Uh, we take out a 1500 horsepower C8 Corvette in rapid blue, so it's a lot of fun, so make sure you stay tuned for the next video as well. And so, on that, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that notification bell. That way, maybe once in a blue moon, YouTube will actually notify you of a new video. And if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. All right, guys, we are here in Houston, Texas at Late Model Racecraft. For those of you that watch Street Speed 717, you've probably seen his ZR1's been down here getting a lot of work done back uh, some time ago. And for those of you that watch my video, with my CA Corvette being delivered, you saw that right there. It was on the trailer as well. And that's my, my good friend Al from Boardwalk Chevrolet. His CA Corvette was on the trailer with mine when mine was being delivered. And they, he's got his here and he's getting a lot of work done to it. So we're gonna go inside and we're gonna talk to them and find out what all they've done to this car. We're gonna do a coldish start on this C8. guys we're here at late model racecraft with steven he's going to talk to us about al's car again you guys know al he was my salesman on my c8 corvette out in california but he's going to fill us in on everything that they've done with this car al's a cool guy yeah. uh obviously we've built a lot of crazy cars here yeah. a lot of crazy twin turbo c8s uh his is one of the top tier ones when i say it's got everything done to it it's got everything done to yeah. it so al did not skimp in any part of this build um to date i don't know if y'all have known how fast the cars went uh, we built this thing, uh, man, probably been three months now because parts and clutches and a lot you don't know about the C8s. The limiting factor in this thing is the clutch and drivetrain. Um, we can make 2,000 horsepower with these things as far as the engine goes and the turbo system goes, but the drivetrain, the transmission, the clutch is what holds us back. So Al's car makes over 1,200 rear wheel horsepower. Took it to the track for the first time probably about a month and a half ago. At the Texas 2K? Uh, it was around that. Okay. It went a 9 one at a hundred and like 60 miles an hour oh my gosh um and so you just asked about the caliper yes in rear and front so we put a 15 inch wheel conversion on it so it has a billet spindle which you can see right here so we changed the spindle out so and then we run the smaller brake and again it doesn't look the best right now it still has a wheel wood caliper so it looks good um but it's so we can fit a small 15 inch wheel on it with the big drag radial tire and nice. that's for drag racing and low roll so it will hook up and go gotcha but this thing again it is a fully built motor from lme so it has forged pistons forged rods it is a fa factory crank rods pistons uh we see and see the cylinder heads obviously valve springs the again the motor is capable 2000 horsepower uh it's the same very similar power plant as the obviously the LT1 and LT4 and LT5s that we do. Right. Um, so I know it, it'll hold the horsepower, the clutch and drivetrain is our limiting component. So this is our top mount twin turbo kit. It is a precision 62, 66 uh, millimeter turbos. It is a ball bearing billet wheel, the best of the best turbos. Um, man, they will support, you know, close to 2000 rear wheel horsepower if we pushed it that far. Um, it is does have an air to water intercooler on it. Mm. Uh, you can't see it. Um, but all the cold piping runs through here. Um, obviously, the down pipes come through here. Nice titanium exhaust. Yes, titanium cap back from the down pipes. And then up front, we have... Oh. So the car, these cars run on direct injection. So when the car idles and drives around, it still runs on direct injection. The stock computer still controls it. Car runs like factory. Once you go into the throttle, we have an aftermarket computer, which I'll show you here in a second. 
that turns on this has a our standalone fuel cell i call it so this thing runs m1 or methanol or alcohol yeah. for those of you at home that know what meth like meth kits are yep um but what we do is we have a meth tank up front and we add the billet intake manifold to it with a second set of injectors so it has port injection on port injection on it as well so once you go into the throttle once it sees a little bit of boost the aftermarket computer says hey i'm seeing boost turn on the second set of injectors nice. so then you have all the fuel we need for 2,000 horsepower. And then this is what I call the ice tank, yeah. um, which is for the air to water intercooler that right. circulates while you're idle driving around. Or if you're at a racetrack, like when we go to quarter mile race it, yeah. we can drain it, put a little bit of ice in it to help keep the intake air temps down. One of the cool things that they were telling me inside too is he wants this to basically be a car that your grandma can drive, it, but at the end of the day, you can also... So I've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. Every year car comes out, Oh, you're not gonna be able to get in the computer. It's gonna be right. a big deal. I've heard that for 20 years. Yeah. In 2018, I know someone very high up at GM called me and said, Steven, be ready. The 2020, you're gonna be screwed. I'm like, yeah, whatever. He was right. <laughs> and so we build these crazy cars. They're super fast. And to be honest, they are in the C8 world. Yeah. They're 100% done. In my world, they're still 98% done. Oh. So this car runs, drives, it's fine. We yeah. can mean you can hop in and drive it to Dallas, Oklahoma, no problems. But there's still, I call little quirks like when it comes to the clutch, the way it engages, right. uh, some of the drivability when you come to a stop, uh, some, some of the clutches in reverse are a little bit different than others. Yeah. So there's still bugs, I call it, that we still want to fine tune. Um, yeah, because when day, you're other, sending off other, a car, you want it to be 100%. You guys me, are, that's important to you guys. That's me, other people out there, and y'all will see twin turbo cars out there driving around town but know that they are not 100% perfect. Yeah. Like I know for a fact, they are not. <laughs> they're, uh, they're throwing check engine lights, they're going to reduce engine power, they have weird stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and again, this one is pretty damn good. Uh, we just have the other blue one in there that I've been playing with for the past week. Uh, doing again, it's all about right now, still tricking the factory computer because yes. it still does run on the factory computer while idle and driving and then wide open throttle. We need to say, all right, stop reading that. Right, start reading this one inside here. This. So if you look in here, it's hotter than heck here. Oh, Houston. yes, it is. I know. So, this is our fuel tech. So, got full data logger on. Let's get the AC going to this baby. <laughs> Woo, she's hot. I know. He's got the seat coolers, right? Yep. <laughs> get, get the seat coolers going. But as you can see, it starts up like a stock car. Sounds great. Uh, get your seat coolers on. So, what's cool about this? Is it tells us, obviously, here's our RPM, here's our maps, our, like our map sensor, O2 sensors, timing, and then here's our data logger. So what's cool about this is I can change the three different settings. Wow. So we can have a 700 horsepower tune-up, a 900 horsepower tune-up, and then a 1200 horsepower tune-up. That's absolutely And you literally crazy. just change it on the fly. You hit check, and it changes the, the map. Wow. And then, like I said, we have two O2 sensors, so it does run in closed loop at wide open throttle. So when the alcohol comes in, this thing can get the, the air fuel exactly where I want it. And then as far as boost control goes, um, a lot of people use manifold pressure. Yeah. Um, I use, I'll show you in the back, there's a CO2 bottle in the back. Uh, I'm a race car guy. I like my shit to be precise. Right. If, I, if I want to leave at 6.2 pounds of boost, it's going to leave at exactly 6.2 pounds of boost and come in at a certain speed. Right, and exactly 0.8 into the runs, it'll be eight pounds of boost. Wow. Right, and then and I, in these cars, we do boost by gear. Okay. So each gear, every time it shifts, I give it more and more boost gotcha. going down track. And that again, way you don't lose tra traction and, and spin out of control. And Yeah, and, and the same with the street. Like this, these cars in the street, the blue one, and if we have time, I'm going to take you for a ride in one. It's identical to this. Okay. Um, I just took it for a ride yesterday. Again, the clutch is a limiting factor, but I mean, and it sounds so good. It does. We like, did the cold, well, coldish start earlier. It sounds great. So the mount, like I said, so this is our first CO2 bottle. I have it out right now because we've been doing testing on the dyno and back and forth. But we have a mount where the CO2 bottle goes here. Oh, nice. And that is essentially for the boost controller. So gotcha. you still have all your trunk space. Yeah. Where, you know, if you want to put your golf clubs in it. Still. Let me ask you, would you be able to put the roof in it with the, yes. the bottle? Really? Yeah. Yeah, That's so impressive. So, come on, come check it out. Again, it's, they're literally identical cars. Yeah. The only difference is, he has the 15 inch wheel conversion on it for the big, I call it drag race. Right. Like Pro Charge C8. Yes, we were looking at that Pro one a minute Charge ago. Pro Charge C8. Pro Charge C8. 
<laughs> yeah, you got, yeah, I went all, it's all three and of these. like a few more out there somewhere. Uh, but this one. Oh, it doesn't. It had, I got the big bottle in it. Oh, gotcha. But the other one has a small bottle. There's a mount. Here, watch. Let me take this out. Sorry. See the mount right there? It mounts right oh, in Oh, I there. see it. Yes. And it's a little, like this one's for my race car. It's in the freezer. I'm using this for just test purposes. Right. But when it's, we ship the car to Al or him, it'll have it mounted just like this with a little thin CO2 bottle. And the CO2 bottle lasts quite a while. Nice. People think it, you know, goes empty. It, you got to beat on it quite a bit. Same yeah, with the fuel cell. That. my cars but act like it was yours do the yeah. R&D take your time make it right and like I said in any other world like these cars I, I'd already ship them to them they can go have fun yeah. with them I'm just uh, I want them to be 100% I don't blame and you and yeah. especially if you live in California you got to appreciate that and that's what yeah and again at the end of the day it's I'm being really picky <laughs> like, like you'll see if we go drive yeah it. you tell me what you think okay if it's how, how close we are to 100% right, right. 